Well, we are back at the dairy again. It's a beautiful misty morning here in South Africa. And misty morning usually means that it's going to be a gorgeous day. So right from the get-go, I know this was going to be an awesome video and I decided to do something special. Now, the pigeons are always out in big numbers in the winter, so I wasn't worried about whether we'd be in a target-rich environment or not. But after the previous video I put out where we got over 100 birds in two hours, I thought we'd focus on quality over quantity today and get out the Sony RX100 camera which films at a thousand frames per second through the scope. Not something you get to see every day. We're going to bring out a number of awesome PCP air guns today when the sun comes out and chat about them a bit. But for now let's start off with a montage of super slow-mo hunting in the fog. This first one is a Dove with a stock standard Impact Mark II shooting 27 grain slugs at 940 feet per second. The footage looks a little bit grainy because of the bad lighting but this bird gets a big piece of lead right where it matters and it's a good start to the day. Next up is Mr. Sparrow and the storyline is pretty much the same. This is probably the best shot in the entire video. This was a sparrow in a tree 112 meters away. I struggled to range him in the fog but eventually get it and gauge the wind perfectly. Just track this 27 grain slug as it curls in. It's probably the coolest thing in the world to watch in slow-mo. And it's the same story for this next sparrow, albeit from a little bit closer at 70 meters. As expected, it turns out to be a glorious sunny day when the fog lifts and the farm suddenly comes to life. I probably would have come out here regardless of whether I had my rifle with me or not. It's just an awesome place to hang out and enjoy the scenery, but we do have a long day ahead of us still. We're back on a dairy and basically this dairy I've had all to myself. No one else really shoots here and that means that the birds are quite chilled. Um, they don't fly away when you, when you get close to them. It gives you time to take shots and it really makes for some awesome footage. So, you know, I've hunted here before, I've made a few videos, but we've got a few new things today. We've got the Crown Continuum and you'll notice I've got the Sony RX100 scope cam on here. We're going to be taking some clips today at a thousand frames per second through the scope cam. So that should really track the pellet nicely through the air and show you some good impacts uh, from the Crown Continuum with the JSB Hades pellets. So this nice short barrel just to show you what it can do. And then for the longer shots, I've got this really modified <laughs> Impact Mark II that we're going to take some crazy, well, I don't know if they'll be long shots, but uh, we're going to have some fun with it. And uh, it's definitely going to hit much harder than this. I mean, it's probably 30 foot pounds versus I think 73 or something on this one. So it's going to be interesting to compare the two and see how they do. But uh, let's get out there and let's see if we can get some birds down. We're going to head back to the spot where I shot those 112 pigeons yesterday. Um, you know, if we, ooh, right here, doves right here. Let's get out and see if we can shoot them. So we've now switched over to the less powerful Crown Compact, which is flinging 16 grain JSB Hades pellets at around 900 feet per second. I'm still getting used to the much loopier trajectory of these pellets, and this one hits a bit lower than I wanted, but it still does the job. And when a few starlings come to land, I waste no time and I pop one of them right in the chest as well. I'm sure most of you know that European starlings are not my favorite birds. They're invasive, they're aggressive, they don't belong in this country and they need to go. So I'm very happy to sacrifice a dove that's giving me an opportunity and rather take the starling. Um, even though starlings are not really seen as food. Um, yep, so Crown's doing really well. I think that shot hit, hits a little bit low. That's either me just misinterpreting uh, how much that pellet's going to drop or maybe I didn't zero the gun properly. So maybe I'll do a quick zero check and, and get back on target. This crown recoils so little that you can hardly tell when the shot goes off but you certainly know when it hits the mark because it hits pretty hard. This dove got knocked backwards which 
surprised me a bit. I don't know if the Hades are opening up or not, but either way, I can't complain about their terminal performance. Right, so brand new gun, Crown Continuum, compact, and very, very new pellets, JSP Hades, which I haven't had that much experience with. This is one of the first times that I've hunted with this combination. In fact, it's the first time I've hunted with this combination, so it has been interesting to see how it performs. Two things I've noticed, number one, okay, I haven't shot with pellets for very, very long, probably a year, that's my disclaimer here. So you, you might see a few misses where I just completely misjudge how much the pellet is gonna drop. I have to basically relearn the trajectory of a pellet all over again. But um, just shooting with this gun again, I've, I've been reminded of how quickly those pellets drop. But also I've been really impressed with the way that the JSB Hades open and you know the damage that they can do at such slow velocities. Um, as I said, this gun is really compact. 380 millimeter barrel, it's very short. So I shot this dove over here and I could see through the scope how the pellet absolutely devastated it. I can see the, on the front of this birdie, I'm not gonna show you any close-ups, but that pellet's opened up nicely, it's done a lot of damage and it put it down on the spot. So that's what you wanna see in a hunting pellet and 900 feet per second with those pellets is more than enough. So I'm really liking the setup, it's, it's nice and compact. If I take the silence off, you can see just how short this gun actually is. So it's a fantastic setup for stuff like this. And you know, if you really wanted to, you could shoot without the silencer if you want it even shorter, but I prefer to have it a little bit quiet just to give me opportunities on other birds that are in the area. I don't want to scare them away, but yep, it's doing well. Uh, putting doves down on the spot. I'm sure it'll do the same with pigeons. I'm going to try to get some pigeons now, and then we'll also take out the, the big boy impact for some longer shots and see if we can get some more pigeons down. So there you go, decoys out and within five minutes they're starting to land. In fact, just after I shot that one, they flew away but now they're landing again. So I'm going to wait for the scope cam clip to process and then take another shot. And it's as simple as that. As long as they can see that the decoys are there, they are brave enough to land because they feel like it's a sign that it's a safe place to be. Rock pigeons are much tougher than doves or starlings so I'm very cautious with shot placement but this one lands exactly where I want it, right in the clockwork, and he just switches off pretty quickly. Another one down. This was just too easy from this distance. This must be 30 meters. Very, very easy. There's no wind today either, which helps a lot. So those pellets are probably going exactly where I want them to go. So. Yep, they keep landing, so let's keep going for it. You can see the decoys in the background here and how effective they are. I'm going to talk about these in a separate video, but for now, just enjoy this one. Again, it's right in the clockwork, but the thing I want to point out is the crazy angle at which the pellet exits. That's just another reminder to always be very, very sure of your surroundings before you pull that trigger. And the last clip of the day with the crown, again spot on, and I'd call that a very successful debut outing for my new favorite traditional bottle gun. I must say I'm really enjoying the continuum, um, especially the short barrel. I don't really see a need for the long barrel because, you know, in general hunting situations you want it short like this. And in my opinion, 380 millimeters is probably the perfect length for a like a walk and stalk hunting gun like this that you just want to you know, climb over fences with and lean on stuff with. It gives me more than enough power. You can see how those birds are getting hit really hard with those JSB Hades pellets. I think I'm shooting like about 905 feet per second, which is more than enough. Um, I'm reaching out there 50 yards, no problem, um, standing shots like this. So yeah, really enjoying this gun. I definitely, I definitely like it more than the Crown with a 500 millimeter barrel and definitely more than anything longer than that. Um, yeah, my opinion is that shorter is better obviously you won't get as many shots per fill and you won't be able to push the power as high but as i said for for walk and stalk hunting like this you don't you do not need anything more so I'm really happy with this gun we're lucky today to have very little wind this part of the country can get pretty gusty at times so i could have actually continued with the crown if i really wanted to but as i've said over and over again the impact is where my heart's at plus i'll admit i just way prefer Hunting with slugs, there's just no comparison. 
my strategy now just while i'm you know waiting for the birds to circle around is to to walk up and down these feeding areas because the pigeons circle around and they land in random spots and they settle there and what you want to do is you want to move around take shots at them and get them moving so that they can spot the decoys from the air there's no point having decoys out if they don't know that they're there so i'm walking around i'm trying to find a few birds and shooting off these fence poles and you know every shot i take gets the birds moving and they end up landing at the decoys where i can set up on them again so spot one or two here let's see if we can get them down I had to put the RX100 on charge for a while, so this one was filmed just through the GoPro. The frame rate is much slower at only 240 frames a second, but the resolution is still awesome. I do wait a little while for the RX100 to charge up again, and then it's straight back to work with the 1000 frames per second goodness. I think these are our 27 grain slugs. I'm going to put them in. Get focused on one of these buggers over here. Let's get a nice close one, shall we? Let's go for a normal body shot to start off. There you go. The harmony of the setup is just perfect. This is a standard Mark II with no modifications and it just sends those slugs flying like a laser with very little effort. It's quiet, it's efficient and I really love it. This clip perfectly illustrates why slugs are so much more effective for hunting. Just look at how hard this one hits. You would never see that with a pellet. And again, right in the clockwork. It really is too easy from these distances but this is a pest control job, so easy is a good thing. There's no need to intentionally make things more complicated. Now while the video is recording to the scope cam, let's talk about this gun. Um, this is my Impact Mark II. I've got two Impact Mark IIs, but this is the standard one. So this one hasn't got anything fancy going on inside like the other one does. This one's a stock standard gun in terms of the internals. So the power that's coming out of this gun is going to be the same as what you can get out of a standard Mark II. Out of a 600mm barrel, I'm shooting 27 grand slugs at about 935 feet per second, which is fantastic. Um, I've got a Donny FL on the end. I've got a Crawford uh, and Lipped rear uh, rest over here with a monopod at the back. I've got a Sabre Tactical Cheek Riser, which is very necessary, I think, for the scope that's this high. And I've got a Night Force Attic R on top, which is a scope that's... That works very well with my scope cam so in terms of getting clear footage it's a good option um i see more pigeons down there i'm sure this video is pretty much done by now yes it is let's see if we can get a shot at a thousand frames a second on a pigeon at 60 meters gonna get in focus here down there at 60. this is one of the more challenging shots of the day from a standing position but that slug curls in nicely and as expected puts it down cleanly and humanely I'd definitely call that a good morning of hunting. And of course, it's awesome to see birds flying in slow motion. It's just one of those things that you can't fully appreciate with the naked eye. As we move into the afternoon, I decide to switch to my super powerful impact and take a few pot shots from the porch outside. And it works out pretty well. So I'm sitting on the front porch here of the farmer's house um, as you can see the cows are basically right in front of me here and the original plan today was to just sit here with a cup of coffee and shoot the birds at the feeding troughs right in front of the house. The reason that's not really going to work is because the, the, pit, the, the cows are all around the feeding trough so there isn't any safe shot that can be taken unless you're right in the middle there. Um, so this is not going to really be an option, uh, these are not as you know, it's not as good as I thought it would be, but I am seeing some pigeons um, landing at this one spot close to me here, like the one I just shot at, and those ones are fair game because there's nothing behind it, it's a safe shot. So I might sit a while longer and, and wait for some more pigeons to rock up. Uh, as you can see here, I'm enjoying being, spending some quality time with my impact, but uh, I'm keen to head out again with the crown uh, and see if I can get more of that gun.
I'm not sure if you would have heard that on the scope cam footage, but that one got hit really, really hard. Uh, these 34 grand slugs are like little grenades that go off um, inside those birds. Um, you know, 73 foot pounds plus they're opening up on impact. It's a really good recipe for, especially taking shots like this where you don't have a super steady rest and you need something that's quite forgiving. I know with these slugs, if I'm taking a shot on a walking bird and I don't get it 100% perfect, I know that I just have to get a small piece of him and he's going to go down very humanely. So, yeah, really happy with that. We might get a few more. We do get a couple more to end the day. These were pigeons sitting on the roof of the farmhouse, but I switched to my Dreamline compact for this one. And the result was another two birds down. And that concludes this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and there will be more coming from the same farm, there are plenty of pigeons here still and I have an awesome video coming where I continue to deal with this problem. If you haven't yet subscribed please continue doing so and I'll see you all next time. If you would like to see the extended version of this video and other extra content like old uploads that YouTube took down or early releases of upcoming episodes head over to airgun101.com. You'll be able to find many other air gun content creators on the site and a safe place where we can build a community and help each other out. It's a real practical way of supporting content creators like myself without paying a cent as the sponsors of the website help contribute towards the running costs of my channel. Alternatively, you can find me on other social media platforms, on my vlog channel and on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.